So let me just scroll up. So normally what we do is we just try the easiest way first, which is stepwise. And then um, these, these two um, equilibria have a common uh, reagent, hydronium. And so I can't solve these independently of one another. And so here I'm going to have 1 times 10 to the minus 8 molar and 1 times 10 to the minus 8 molar. Now, in step 2, um, we're going to get some additional hydronium because we're going to look at KW. KW is liquid water molecule colliding with liquid water molecule. This is going to make hydronium. So we're going to get extra hydronium from this collision. We're also going to get hydroxide. Now, there are different ways we can handle this. Um, but probably the easiest way, what we do for stepwise is we just carry this down. So I'm going to take this here and then bring it down here. And so I'm going to start off with 1 times 10 to the minus 8 molar. This is um, from the HCl from step one. And then the water, I'm going to assume nothing's happened yet with water. So, it, you know, we're going to get a collision here, collision here, and nothing's happened yet. So this is zero molar from KW. Okay, then I'm going to turn on water. You know, you can't prevent it from colliding, but I'm just going to pretend it didn't collide yet. So that's my initial. So I already have some product there to begin with. And then what we'll do is we'll take a look at the uh, change here. Now the change is not going to be as significant because we already have quite a bit of hydronium here. So this is going to be plus x molar. This is going to be plus x molar. And we look at KW for this is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. If I look at KW alone, I would say that X is negligible. You know, because K is so small, X in the forward direction should be negligible. But in this case, it's not negligible. Why? Well, is X negligible compared to zero? No, x is significant compared to zero if you have nothing. This is like if you're in the desert, even one drop of water, let's say you're dying of thirst, you know, one drop of water would be, right, very valuable. But let's say you're in an Olympic sized swimming pool and one drop of water gets splashed out, would you even care? No, you wouldn't care. And so it depends on how much you have to begin with. And so this is like, being on Mars and you're looking for water and you find one drop of water, that's huge, right? Or being on the moon, there's water on the moon, so there's a little bit of water on the moon, but any extra water is going to be significant. So um, it's going to be significant because the initial is so small. And so this is why um, Petrucci says to take the ratio. If you take the ratio of um, the initial over K, you know, in this case, the initial is 10 to the minus 8, K is 10 to the minus 14, we get 10 to the plus 7. Is that right? Um, 10 to the minus 7. 10 to the minus 7. Something. Something of the sort. But I don't usually do that. I just go ahead and see if it's justified at the end. Because I don't want to waste time doing that particular ratio and then trying to interpret it. But um, it might not work here. You know, looking at this, I'd assume it works. Looking at this, I assume it fails. And so we have 1 times 10 to the minus 8 plus x. And then we have x. Even though I'm thinking it's going to fail, I'm still going to try it. I'm still going to try the simplifying assumption. OK, so I'll go ahead and try the simplifying assumption. Um, that is 1 times 10 to the minus 8 plus x. 
you know, times x is going to simplify. This is the SA. The SA, we're going to assume that x is much smaller than 1 times 10 to the minus 8. So this simplifies into 1 times 10 to the minus 8 times x. And therefore, x, the reason I do this is because it's so easy to calculate, usually. So x is um, times 10, this is going to be 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6. And then we calculate the percent change. Percent change in this case is x over 1 times 10 to the minus 8, which is going to be 10 to the minus 6 divided by 10 to the minus 8 times 10 squared percent is 100 percent. So um, this is going to be 10 to the minus 6 is 10 to the positive 8 gives us 10 to the positive 2. This is going to give us 10 to the 4th percent, or 10,000 percent, which is um, way too big. This is way bigger than 5 percent, so failed. So I kind of suspected it was going to fail, but I wanted to just try it in the chance that it actually worked, but it didn't. So what that means is we have to use the quadratic, but this is a pretty simple one for the quadratic. This is just going to be x squared. This is going to be uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 8x plus 1 times 10 to the minus 8x minus 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 is equal to 0. <coughs> so. Go to the quadratic solver. One times ten to the minus eight, so one e to the minus eight. And then negative 1 times 10 to the negative 14, is that right, for C. That gives us 9.512 times 10 to the minus 8. 9.512 times 10 to the minus 8. One five one two, five one two nine point. Uh, I don't remember. Nine point five one two, four. Times of negative eight. We can't use a negative root. Um, The other root is negative 1.05 times 10 to the negative 7. We can't use the negative root because that would give us negative concentrations here. So if somebody said, um, I need you to weigh out negative 5 grams of sodium chloride, it's impossible, yeah. Smallest amount is zero. We can't go smaller. But I still might ask you to give me no. I'll, let me give you a negative $100 bill. Then, um, would that work? Yeah, I'll take $100 from you. <coughs> About that. Oh, anyway, going back to this, let's see if it, this works out. Um, so what we're going to do is, uh, I'm just going to add this, but they're both 10 to the minus 8. But take a look. The HCl contributed how much? Well, the HCl contributed 1 times 10 to the minus 8. The water contributed 9.5124 times 10 to the negative 8. Which one contributed more hydronium? Step 1 or step 2? Step 2 for sure. 
And th that might be a little bit confusing because we said we were going to start off with the biggest hydronium contributor. And didn't I say HCL was going to be the biggest hydronium contributor? And so maybe I should have rephrased that. You know, which one has the largest K? We're going to start off with the K value. And HCL had the very large K, but water had a much smaller K. But why is water producing so much more hydronium with a much smaller K compared to HCL with a much bigger K producing so little hydronium in comparison? There's just so much more water. Yeah, exactly. There's so much more water. The HCL is 1 times 10 to the minus 8 molar. Water is 55 and a half molar. And so it's just going to produce more. In fact, it produces about 90% of all the hydronium in this particular. Now, this the amount of hydronium changed significantly. So remember Le Chatelet's principle. Le Chatelet says if we perturb it, which we did. Take a look at step one. Step one ended at 1 times 10 to the minus 8 molar. We ter perturbed that. Now we're at 10.5. Is that going to screw up step one? And so this is the question we have to ask. Will this perturb step one, this change, perturb step one? If the answer is um, no, then we're good. If the answer is yes, then it's bad. This is bad uh, calculation. And what we have to do is we have to use simultaneous. So how can I tell if that's going to perturb it? Well, how we can tell is we can just do Le Chatelet's principle. So if I plug it in here, um, so I increase the hydronium, which way does the equilibrium shift? To the left. So it just perturbed it. It perturbed it, but HCl is a this is a one-way reaction. This only goes one way forward. That is, let's say I'm going to perturb this. I'm going to dump in a whole bunch of sodium chloride. So I'm going to increase the chloride concentration. Will that neutralize this acid, the hydronium? No. no. And so the situation is, if I add more hydronium here, it's not going to neutralize more chloride, forming HCl, which is a weaker acid. What we're going to do here is we're just going to, um, actually, is it a weaker? No, stronger acid. This is str two strong acids. But anyway, what we're going to do here is um, realize that, that this is 100%. And therefore, it does not perturb. Step one has a very large Ka, which we assume to be 100% reaction. You know, the approach is 100% reaction. Oh, yeah, therefore it's not perturbed. It, this reaction doesn't go backwards, it just goes forwards. And we're OK. So uh, if that doesn't perturb, then I'm going to figure out, to the, just double check my calculation. This is going to be 9.5124 times 10 to the minus 8. OK, can you double check K here? So K is going to equal the hydronium concentration at equilibrium, this number, times the hydroxide ion concentration at equilibrium. What does the uh, K value calculate out to?
1 times 10 to the negative 14. What did you get? Um, there's something wrong. Let me try it. So I, I do 10.5124 times 10 to the negative 8. Okay, great. What was the coefficient? Oh, for the... One time... Oh, what did you get? I got... Well, I got 10 to the negative 15, so 1. Okay, yeah. 1.0. 1. I just want to know how many sig figs. You got 1.0? Um, yeah, two sig figs. Do you so have I got more? 9 .99. All right, let's let's do that one. Let's go zero. Let's go zero point nine. How many nines? Uh, three nines or four nines actually. Four nines, and then what's the digit after the nine? Eight. Eight. Yeah, um, so we can round that to 1.0. So this is times 10 to the negative 14, which is good. All right, now we can calculate the pH. Uh, what is the pH going to be? Well, the pH is going to be the negative log of the hydronium concentration, which is going to be 10.5124 times 10 to the minus 8. Six point nine seven eight, which is acidic or basic? Neutral, almost. almost neutral, but acidic or basic? Acidic. acidic. Would you drink this? Yeah, I'd drink this, no problem. You probably drink worse than this. You drank that tap water. Mm -hmm. More basic. Or more basic. Mm -hmm. Is that always happening with all water? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's happening. And depending on the pH, you can start precipitating out stuff just by with the CO2, you know. In fact, that's one of the things they're looking at. They're looking at um, CO2 sequestering, you know, by bubbling CO2 in generating a little bit of carbonic acid, enough carbonic acid to precipitate out carbonates. So they're trying to precipitate out carbonates. The reverse is happening, like, uh, it was happening, uh, they were losing a lot of coral, you know, um, at one, one time, you know, because it was, the, the opposite was happening with all the uh, industrialization, then you had a lot of acid rain, and then the pH was going down in the oceans, the pH was going down in the oceans, it was, it was um, <clears throat> dissolving a lot of the coral, and so the coral reefs, they're losing a huge amount of coral reefs, and this was the big thing, environmental thing, for a while, you know, it was because there's too much acid in the environment. 
But now it's kind of the opposite. The coral you haven't heard anything about the coral reefs, right? The, the dissolving of the coral reefs by acid rain. This is maybe decades ago. Um, that's probably because of CO2. You know, CO2 is shifting the balance back the other way. So maybe one advantage of having more CO2 in the atmosphere is good for the coral, but you know, the negatives would be global warming, as they say. But you know, there's still a lot of data out on that. And so that it's hard to model these kind of systems. When, when somebody says they know what's, what's happening, and there's so many equilibria happening at the same time, it becomes very difficult to solve. You know. Um, in these models. But uh, we're going to just look at solving simple ones, you know, just like two or three or maybe four equilibria happening. <clears throat> and so let's take a look at the next example. Uh, the next example is going to be um, simultaneous. So that previous example was what we call stepwise. Um, so let's look at some, we'll take this acid instead. We're going to go with 1 times 10 to the minus 8 molar. I'm going to pick an acid. Let me see. The book uses HCN as example. Maybe we'll do a different acid. Or maybe I'll just do HCN. Hydrocyanic acid is quite toxic. Maybe we'll do um, nitrous acid. Uh, may, uh, actually, to make this more dramatic, we'll just do HCN. Um, <clears throat> what is the K value of HCN? You know, how weak of an acid is this? So we look up the Ka. The Ka is not on that chart there, so I have to look it up in the book. But it's, it's quite small meaning that it's pretty weak. So this is alphabetical. So hydrocyanic acid, 6.2 times 10 to the minus 10. It's, what's the weakest acid? We have a 10 to the minus 11, 10 to the minus 13. Um, of course, there are weaker acids than this. Like alcohols, you know, if we threw alcohols on this, the Ka value for those are way smaller than this. Methane, methane's Ka is in incredibly small. In fact, methane's Ka is what we'd consider so small, it's you know, negligible. And so this is still a decent acid. So this is one of the weakest. But I want to pick this one because it's a monoprotic acid. If I pick something like phosphoric, phosphoric, actually pyrophosphoric, pyrophosphoric is a quattroprotic acid, so it has four acidic hydrogens. Phosphoric is triprotic acid. And we have some um, diprotic acids like malonic acid, oxalic acid. Citric acid is triprotic. So we're just going to look at HCN. This is ammonia, uh, not ammonia. Ammonia is typically not thought of as an acid, but it can be. Its K value would be extremely small. It's normally thought of as a base. So anyway, 6.2 times 10 to the minus 10, meaning it's pretty weak, but it's still stronger than what? Water. No, um, versus KW. This is 1.0 times 10 minus 14. So this is how we're going to dictate it. We're going to do step one is going to be the larger K, and then we'll do step two. I don't want to do simultaneous. I try to avoid it. And so first try stepwise. Because if stepwise works, you've just saved yourself a ton of, ton of math. And so we're going to try it. So we'll do HCN um, is going to produce some hydronium. K 
decays, just products over the reactants. So the initial concentration of one times 10 minus eight, I'm just doing one sig fig, even though I don't like one sig fig, so I don't want to write too much. I'm just lazy, that's basically it. That's, I think that's why a lot of students like one sig fig, you know, because it's um, a hassle writing a bunch of digits all the time. But it's important to, you know, if we only had one sig fig up here, then our, we'd have to round this to one sig fig, which would be pH 7. It's not really pH 7, it's just slightly acidic. So we want more. So I'll just say exactly, you know, I, this is a hypothetical. If we had exactly 1 times 10 minus 8 molar, so that means I have infinite sig figs here. And so I'm going to limit the sig figs with the other stuff. So we assume nothing. We don't have any hydronium here. We do actually have hydronium. There's hydronium in water, right? But we don't want to put it in here. We're going to pretend water hasn't hydrolyzed yet. We're going to make it wait its turn, you know? And so this way, um, the math is a lot easier. And so this is going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 8 minus x molar, and then x and x. And so Ka, this is going to give us x squared over 1 times 10 to the minus 8 minus x. And this is equal to 6.2 times 10 to the minus 10. Now, 10 to the minus 10, that's pretty small, so maybe the SA will work. But this is pushing it. It probably won't work, but I'm going to try it regardless. And so I'm going to try the SA, which is going to give us x squared over 1 times 10 to the minus 8. And then solve for x. I'm just going to try it because it doesn't take too much work to do. So it's going to be... Um, 6.2 times 10 to the negative 18 square root. And uh, did you get an x? I got a really small number, 7.874 times 10 to the 3, 6, 9. It's 10 to the negative 9. That's a really small change. We got 2.48 times 10 to the negative 9. Oh. All right. I, yeah, sometimes the keys don't work on this. 2.48? 2.48. Nine, 9 times 10 to the negative 9. It's still really small. I mean, that's extremely small change. But the problem is, is we're starting off with almost nothing. Oh, I forgot to add pages to this. So what is the percent change? Which is equal to the change over the initial times 100%. Yeah, that's greater than 5%, so this is not going to work. But it didn't take too much time. And if it did work, then that would have been nice. So we're going to have to use the quadratic equation. But fortunately, the quadratic for this particular problem is not terribly hard, I think. 
this is going to be x squared minus 6.2 times, um, actually minus, so it's going to be plus, sorry, x squared plus 6.2 times 10 to the minus 10x, that to both sides, minus 1, or no, minus 6.2 times 10 to the minus 18 is equal to 0. 10 and 18. So I'm going to go to the quadratic solver here. Okay, uh, 2.1992 times 10 to the minus 9. 2.1992. Not, you know, not terrible. Um, the simplifying assumption, we got 2.4899. This, the quadratic, 2.1992 times 10 to the negative 9. And so we'll just plug that in up here and check our k. So we're going to 2.1992 times 10 to the negative 9. This will be the same, 2.1992 times 10 to the negative 9. I'm carrying extra digits here just so we don't have to worry about round off error when we do calculate k. And so I'm going to convert this to 10 to the negative 8. So if I make this bigger, then I have to make this smaller. So this is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 8 minus 0 0.21992 times 10 to the negative 8. And so this is going to give me 0 0.78118, no, 018, something like that, times 10 to the negative 8 molar. If we stop here, am I okay, or should I worry about water? Oh, yeah. We, if I stop here, what would the pH be? Well, the pH would be like in the 8, 9 range, which is quite basic, yeah. So it's not going to work. Usually water contributes, at, at the most, water can contribute 10 to the negative 7. Um, at the most. But if, if water is contributing 10 to the negative 8, 10 to the negative 9, then it's significant here. So I'm going to worry about water. So I'm going to go to step 2. <coughs> uh, but before I go to step 2, let's double check our k. With those values there, what does k equal? Times 10 to the negative 10? Yeah. Okay, that checks out. That's good. That would round to 6.2. So um, we solved our first equilibrium. Let's go to step 2. That was step 1. We're going to look at the additional hydronium. Um, we're going to generate if we factor in water. It's not going to be huge. It's not going to be huge because kW is so small. And kW is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. And so it's going to be very small, but we have so little. You know, this, this is much. I mean, 10 to the negative 9 is not that much. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to carry down the hydronium from step one. And so we go hydronium from step one. We'll plug in here 2.1992 times 10 to the negative 9. 
molar. And then the hydroxide, we pretend that the water hasn't done anything, so the hydroxide is just zero. Now, KW doesn't generate much, and if we have some hydronium already present here, it's still not going to generate. If this were pure water, we'd generate 10 to the minus 7 molar hydronium and 10 to the minus 7 molar hydroxide. But since we already have some hydronium here, we're going to generate much less than 10 to the minus 7 molar. And so that's going to be plus x. We'll figure that out. And so we're going to get 2.19. Well, why don't you finish out this one? Um, did you guys get it? Did you try the simplifying assumption? Yeah. Yeah. It failed. 200,000% change. Did you use the quadratic? Yeah. So if we could get this in quadratic form, x squared plus 2.1992 times 10 to the minus 9 x minus 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. So, mm -hmm. not too difficult to get it in quadratic form, but um, if you were to plug, plug this into the quadratic equation, it's a, it's a bit of a pain because of the digits. Let's see, pigs. Did you get, what, 989? 9.898906 times 10 to the minus 8?
Scroll down. It only gave you the negative root? It should give you both. I don't know what's what's wrong with that, but um, well, let's even check if this is even correct or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this into um, ten to the negative nine. So if I make this smaller, I got to make the coefficient bigger, and so this is going to be two point one nine nine two times ten to the minus nine plus. I'll move it three over, 9,890.6 times 10 to the negative 9. So this gives me 9,892.7 times 10 to the 9. This number of sig figs is wrong. And then over here, I'll put in um, 9.8906 times 10 to the negative 6 molar. OK, and let's calculate the K to make sure it's still OK. Hmm, I, I seem to be off. Did somebody calculate K? Is it? Okay. Let me just double check why I did that wrong. Yeah, sorry. This is a negative six. I copied that wrong. So this has got to be eight. Did you calculate K? What did you get? Okay, so 0 0.9. How many nines? Three nines. Three nines and an eight. So this is going to round to 1.0 to the negative 14. So we're okay. So this is good, right? Okay, work out. So we completed step two. Are we done? No, no. Not quite done. Because um, how much did we increase the hydronium? Well, we started off with two, and then we added about 10,000 more. So the hydronium changed significantly. 
So what we need to do is we need to make sure that step two did not perturb step one. So check if this perturbs the previous step. So if we go back here, we calculated K up here. And so we need to recalculate K for step one. Recalc K for step one using the new hydronium. And so we change the hydronium. But we didn't change the cyanide or the HCN, correct? And so let's go ahead and plug in the new hydronium, which is going to be 9,892.7 times 10 to the minus 8. And then we're going to use the old cyanide, which is 2.1992 times 10 to the minus 9. Divided by the HCN concentration, which is going to be 0 0.78018 times 10 to the minus 8. I think you can see what's going to happen. We, we change the hydronium significantly, 10,000 times more, roughly, you know, 5, 10,000, whatever. And so the K is going to be way off now. This is the K value. It's going to be way off. It's no longer at equilibrium. Um, that's not a problem. We could do a Le Chatelet's type shift problem that I did. Remember the volume change problem we did in class? This is Le Chatelier's. If I change something, like change one of the concentrations or change all the concentrations, I can just recalculate that. If we try to, try to fix step one equilibria, so we go back and fix step one. What's that going to do to step two? Yeah, it'll upset step two. And then up step two will no longer be at equilibrium. And so you, do we see we're in an endless loop? We're never going to get the answer. And therefore, we have to use the simultaneous method. You should be able to set up the simultaneous method. And so we're going to solve these um, simultaneously. That is, there's not going to be a step one and a step two. Well, I have to do one of these first. Let's go ahead and do the HCl, H2O liquid. Um, uh, HCN, sorry. HCN plus H2O liquid gives us H3O plus, plus cyanide. Uh, the initial HCN I know is 1 times 10 to the minus 8 molar. And water is pure liquid. But the hydronium, the hydronium is already going to be there from step whatever, from the water. And so we're going to um, call this uh, Y. And then the cyanide is going to be 0. And so so initially, we're going to have some hydronium from KW, water. And then there's going to be a change. The change is going to be minus x molar, plus x molar, plus x molar. And so at equilibrium, I'm going to have 1 times 10 to the minus 8, minus x, y plus x, 
and then x. There are two methods for simultaneous. We have this one, and then we have another system of equations. This one we combine the ice tables. The other method we do what's called a mass and charge balance. I'll look at this later. So what we have is we have um, both of these involve a system of equations. System of equations is we have more than one unknown. So for example, if we have two unknowns, how many equations do we need? Two, two equations. Three unknowns would require three. So, so far we have two unknowns, x and y. Okay, let's look at the other equilibria. The other equilibria is gonna be H2O liquid plus H2O liquid. This is gonna to go to hydronium plus hydroxide. Each two is pure liquid. Hydronium, what am I going to use as starting amount for hydronium? I'm not going to use Y plus X. I'm just going to use the hydronium that comes only from HCN, which is going to just be X. And the hydroxide? is going to be zero. Now the change, I'm going to call the change for this um, y. And so I'm going to get plus y here and plus y here. And so at equilibrium I'm going to get x plus y molar and y molar. Do you see how this is not going to screw up the equilibria? So once I establish equilibrium in step one, I have this much hydronium. Once I establish equilibrium in step two, these aren't some um, separate steps really. I have the same, x plus y is equal to y plus x. And so they have the same amount of hydronium at equilibrium, which means they aren't going to perturb each other. Now the problem is, is trying to solve for x or y. So why don't you just try it right now. Solve for x and y. Mm -hmm. 